Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Today's topic is going to be contact tracing, which will be presented, presented by Aruba uh, in partnership with uh, us at Integra One. My name is Kat Tuttle. I'll be the woman behind the curtain today. I am the marketing and communications manager at Integra. So as you can see here on this slide, um, I'm just gonna do a super, super quick uh, introduction of Integra, Integra One in case some of the folks on the line aren't familiar with us. Um, you can see our solution areas listed out here, but really what we want to say is that, you know, our attitude as a company is really relationship oriented. Um, we've been in, in business for 30 years and truly we, we like to take that relationship approach rather than a transactional approach to business. You can move forward, Tom. Again, 30 years uh, in the region, we have five offices across Pennsylvania to serve you in a local, a localized way. Allentown, Philadelphia, Harrisburg, Wilkes-Barre, and Pittsburgh. Uh, on the other side of the slide there, you can see we do serve a variety of industries. Um, and so we do have specialists uh, in all of those areas to better serve you. Can move on. Few little housekeeping items before we kick it over to our Aruba presenters. So first, we will be sending out a post-webinar survey uh, sometime today. Now, we will not have you sit there for half an hour and fill out hundreds of questions. This will be a very, very brief survey just to get your feedback on how you thought the webinar went today, what we might be able to do in the future, give you a chance to ask any additional questions of our presenters. So we appreciate your feedback on that. And lastly, I want to mention um, our events page. So, of course, with circumstances being what they are, we're leaning toward a lot of virtual events these days. Um, but integraone.com slash events is the place to go if you are interested in keeping up with any activities that we will have planned in the future. Now, quickly, before I kick it over to our presenters, I'd just like to mention that Integra One has recently been awarded uh, the Aruba East Region Partner of the Year Award, which is extremely exciting for us. Thank you to Aruba. Um, you know, we're really, really grateful for, for that uh, award. And I think it speaks to just the strength of our partnership with Aruba. And, you know, that's one of the reasons, you know, we, we love doing uh, events of this nature with them. So without further ado, I think that's the end of my slides, Tom. So I'd love to introduce our presenters today very quickly and they'll speak more about themselves as they get rolling. Tom Sterlitsky and Eric Moore are both uh, systems engineers at Aruba and they're gonna be walking through the contact tracing today. Um, folks, if you have questions for our presenters as they're speaking, feel free to enter those into the chat box, which is on the GoToWebinar control panel that you'll see on the right of your screen. And uh, Tom and Eric will be addressing those uh, toward the end of the webinar. So do feel free to enter those questions as we move forward. Tom, um, that's, uh, that's it for me. We'll kick it over to you. Great, Catherine. Thanks so much. And again, everyone, thanks for joining us this morning. Again, I'm Tom Schlitzky. I will be uh, taking you through this presentation. And uh, my colleague, Eric, is going to be uh, helping answer the questions as, as we go through the presentation this morning. So. Just kicking off the agenda here a little bit we're going to be talking about contact tracing and you know some other things around that so the new challenges the reimagined workplace right what is return to office or return to school look like uh from the aruba perspective uh what do you have possibly already in your infrastructure that can help you with contact tracing so from a wi-fi or bluetooth perspective what third-party solutions are out in the marketplace that you can also use to triangulate where users are in a facility to augment your contact tracing abilities. And then we'll end with uh, some Q&A. We'll kick it over to Eric to see if there's anything uh, live uh, that comes up as we go through the presentation. That would be great to answer uh, live with the whole audience here. So let's just kind of get started here a little bit, right? This hybrid workplace that we're all in. Um, you know, I kind of remember, uh, you know, as, as many of us do, right? We were in the office on a Friday and by the following Monday we were mostly working all from home. So some new challenges we've had, right? This uh, overnight switch to remote work and remote learning in many cases, right? Uh, that's kind of also spawned this uh, exponential growth of our edge. So our, our edge of our network is typically, you know, usually contained within the walls of our facilities, but now, you know, we have to facilitate anytime, anywhere learning, um, potentially right now without necessarily being in the office or being in a school place every day. So that definitely is uh, posing a lot of challenges for our customers. 
Uh, obviously, our, our IT resources are typically not uh, not being augmented or, or growing right now. So our IT departments have had to make a shift overnight, and they are still kind of working through how that how that's going to work long term. As we're talking about maybe coming back into the office, we have to understand how we're going to be using our space. So in intelligence on our spatial use, um, such things like how many people are in a space, how we reduce occupancy enough, where are people traveling within our buildings so that we know where we should be cleaning, things of that nature, right? We also need to make the environment uh, safe for our students and, and faculty, right? So we need them to feel that coming back into the office is, is safe for them, um, besides, you know, uh, being kind of necessary to continue learning. And then economic pressures, right? We all we all know that, you know, every industry is is feeling economic pressures right now. So that's something we have to be cognizant of. So as Aruba kind of set out uh, in this journey and started talking to industry experts, talking to our customers, we've really kind of um, broken this up into a three phase approach, right? So we're all are kind of in this phase one right now, right? Where we're trying to work from, from home or work remotely and what that's gonna look like long term. You know, prior to COVID, Many organizations had adopted some loose form of a work from home policy where, you know, maybe you're in the office, you know, three or four days a week and you maybe work from home on a Friday. And that was usually targeted at a subset of your users. Oftentimes it was the IT department or, you know, maybe finance, but it wasn't necessarily every worker. Now, you know, we've, we've kind of had to pivot and it seems like everybody's working from home. So those solutions are, are still available. They're still kind of being refined as we're kind of looking down the road to see how long we're going to be in this uh, type of environment. Today's presentation is mostly going to focus on phase two of, of what we're calling our three phase uh, journey here. And that's really this return to office or return to school. So what do we need to do to get back in into our buildings uh, in some way, shape or form? And how are we addressing our employees concerns around health and safety? So this is really where contact tracing and social distancing uh, kind of come up in conversation, as well as, you know, uh, reconfiguring physical spaces. So that's where we'll be focusing today's presentation on. And then really phase three is kind of like the long term, right? 18 months out from now, what is our work life going to look like? What's, this, what's our school life going to look like? You know, are we going to be able to return everybody into the building like we normally would or are we still going to be doing this hybrid type environment where you have some people working from home or some students from home and some in the classroom so that is more of a tbd um, and as we go through the summer months um, we're going to have i think a better understanding of what the long term is going to look like here so again we're going to focus on phase two so we're, we're calling this rto or rts right return to office return to school again talking to customers what are their priorities again student safety, employee safety, right? What's gonna make them feel safe to come back and what is gonna be uh, safe for them to come back to, right? What layout, how many students, what the occupancy can be and kind of uh, relaying that information and ensuring uh, that we're doing everything that we can. You know, but what can we leverage that we already own, right? So um, to help with that, so Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, right? We pretty much all have wireless in our buildings today. So what, what can that do to kind of help us you know, should we have a COVID positive case come on campus at some point? Because there is a extreme likelihood that that's probably going to happen. What can we do from a safety and privacy standpoint? So, you know, we have to be sure and HIPAA compliant. Contact tracing for infected individuals and then really enhanced cleaning protocols, right? What can we do? Because your buildings can't obviously be deep cleaned every single night. You're not going to be able to have enough staff to augment to do that. So what can technology do to kind of help us understand where the focus areas are and, and where they aren't. And again, these are just some, some more questions that we have to kind of think about how we would answer once we you know reinitialize you know activities in our building. Right. So you know worst case scenario we have a COVID positive come in, you know, who do they have who do they have contact with in the building, right? Um, most people, if I asked where were you last Thursday at 10 a.m. in the morning and who did you meet and give me their phone number and their email address, probably not gonna be uh, something that's gonna scale, right? Um, we're gonna have missed contacts, uh, potentially people's memory just is not that good. I know personally my memory is, is not that good, right? So we have to kind of take that into account. You know, and how long did you come into contact with them? So per CDC, right, right now what they're saying, um, you know, less than six feet, more than 15 minutes. That's what they 
That's what they're saying is a, an actual contact. But that guidance could change, right? It could be half an hour at some point. It could be five minutes. Who knows? So we have to have a solution that's going to be flexible enough for us to understand um, what's going on in our spaces, but also be able to adapt when, you know, the guidelines change. Uh, where people were in a building, again, this is really important, um, but also important for your, your cleaning staff. And then just some overall questions, right? So from a policy standpoint, have we actually reduced occupancy enough within the building, right? So I know many of you have many thousand square foot buildings, so maybe you're going to go to a half occupancy model. That's really great. But even being at half occupancy doesn't necessarily mean that we're taking into account social distancing because we could still have clusters of people within a building. So we really need to understand how our spaces are being used and where they're being used and have that data in real time. And one final thing, when we're discussing contact tracing in general, it's really intended to augment the contact tracing process. So it's not really meant uh, to be a replacement. So as I'm talking to customers um, about contact tracing, we're often pose the question, you know, they just want to hit a button, get a report out of, of every contact that a, a student or a staff member has come into contact with. And that obviously you can do, but um, you still need that contact uh, tracing interview, right? You still need to go through that process because the technology, depending on which way uh, you, which mode you use, whether Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or app-based, they all have different levels of accuracy. So going through a, a formal contact tracing interview is still necessary, but this can really jog uh, a person's memory and uh, you can definitely get some actionable data uh, just by using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So, you know, again, talking with more and more customers, um, really defining what your organization actually needs, right? So when I'm talking to some of my business-based customers, they just wanna know that they've reduced occupancy and it's kind of on the individuals to ensure that they're social distancing because they're working in an environment with all adults, right? But, um, you know, as we move into our, our higher eds and our, our K-12s, right, they need a little bit more data because they have uh, usually a lot more dense of population and they're going to have a, much more of a flow of students in and out of their facilities. So contact tracing becomes a little bit more uh, needed in uh, areas where we're in education. And that's really where we're having a lot of discussions right now. Um, and there are some businesses that are also looking at contact tracing, but um, I would say the majority of our inquiries are around educational customers. So, you know, but do you need to know just your facility occupancy load? Have you reduced it? Or do you need to know where people have been traveling within your facility? Or do you actually really need a contact tracing solution, right? Is that, do you need to know and are you uh, required to report? um uh, tracing efforts within within your school or, or within your business so those are really the three buckets that we've kind of broken this down into so location location tracing or contact tracing you know, there's a little bit of a semantical difference there location tracing is simply where have people been within your facility where contact tracing is who they've been in contact with within your facility and for how long uh, just just to be that clear on that but you know what about apple and google and the all these apps that are out there right i mean we're hearing about them uh, many governments are starting to use these. So there's a couple of things that uh, these apps lack. So the first, the, the biggest hurdle that we found with customers and with the data thus far that we've received is the adoption rate on apps is relatively low, right? It's a between 20 and 30%. And there's a variety of reasons for that. Some users just really don't um, want to be a part of contact tracing or they don't believe it's necessary. Um, they don't install the app or they don't enable it within the privacy settings properly. But there are other, other issues, right? So again, in education, um, I would say most of your users, maybe in your younger grades, aren't going to necessarily have a device, right? They may have a laptop or something, but it doesn't necessarily stay with them everywhere they go and within a building. Um, the other problems that we run into is, you know, using GPS um, on a phone within a building is usually not accurate enough. GPS um, the level of accuracy for contact tracing purposes isn't isn't that great. We find that most of these apps use something called a proximity-based technology. And what that really just means is they use maybe the Bluetooth to beacon near another uh, device. And that's how they determine if you've come into contact with somebody. The problem with that is, is it doesn't give any data back to the organization, right? So me, Tom, the user, 
I know that um, I came into contact with somebody at some point somewhere who may have tested positive uh, for COVID. Maybe I should go get a test myself, but it doesn't actually aid in cleaning efforts in your buildings or in your contact tracing efforts because that data isn't exposed to the organization. Um, furthermore, the actual location data for that uh, COVID positive case doesn't get reported back uh, to the organization. So the only way that gets reported is from the user themselves. And at that point, you're kind of relying just on their memory of where they've been in your facility. So um, time to actually finding out where they've been and what they've been doing takes a lot longer. Um, and there's a lot of different apps out there, right? So if we don't all install the same app, we're not necessarily guaranteed that we're all going to be getting the same uh, level of accuracy or data. So there's, there's definitely some shortcomings here. The primary purpose of these apps is really just to give you something that, hey, if you've gone to the grocery store last week and you walked near somebody who may have had, who may have tested uh, positive for COVID, that it alerts you. And, and in that particular use case, these apps work very well. But when we're talking about um, bringing people back to the office or bringing people back to school, um, their usefulness is a little bit, a uh, little bit less. So we already have a lot of context with Aruba um, access points, right? We've already got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built into our access points as well as Zigbee, but for locationing, we're using Wi-Fi and, and Bluetooth. Aruba has a long heritage in indoor location and wayfinding. Uh, we have a company that we acquired many years ago called Meridian that is a part of Aruba and has been uh, heavily integrated into many of our solutions. Um, so up until this point, we typically were using this uh, location wayfinding in like museums and hospitals and airports but all of our customers have the platform built into the product already they already have the radios that they need and they already have these installed in their ceiling so from an infrastructure standpoint most customers are more than halfway to having a contact tracing solution already installed so let's just talk a little bit about how these solutions kind of get packaged and really what the need is here so it's a strange way to talk about this, but you have to instrument your users. And, and that really just means you have to put something on the user, whether it's using their phone, whether it's using a wearable of some type, or whether it's using an installed app on, an, on a phone or a device, right? In some way, shape or form, you have to instrument the user. So in my educational customers, we're typically talking about a wearable of some kind, um, either be it a wristband or, um, uh, like a stick on beacon um, or perhaps a phone. There is a little difference here when we're using a phone versus an app. And I just want to kind of make light of this now and we'll circle back on this as we go through the presentation. By simply having a phone connected or within your, your network, um, we can always triangulate its position via Wi Fi, right? There's no app necessary because the device itself is going to be connected to the wireless. And as it roams and moves around, we can triangulate where it is within your building. So that is an app list approach. And if we're using something like ClearPass, where the user registers their device, now we have a name, right? So now we know who's roaming around the building with their phone. With a wearable, it could be a Wi-Fi based wearable, like oh, like an Apple Watch or something like that, or it could be uh, a purpose specific application. And we'll talk about um, our Meridian product and our um, token-based uh, Bluetooth tracking. And then using an app, uh, an app can, can use a multitude of, of modes uh, for triangulation, right? It can use Bluetooth. It can use phone-to-phone -phone Bluetooth. It can also use the wireless and or the Bluetooth within the uh, radio. But most of those efforts are some kind of a custom app design. So keep that in mind uh, for your timelines. Again, we chatted already about your existing infrastructure, but we can use wireless-based locationing, which pretty much everyone has some kind of wireless. Uh, we can also use um, our Bluetooth uh, Meridian product for locationing. So just discussing a little bit more, right? Some additional questions. What is your accuracy need? So when we're talking wireless, we're talking a 10 to 15 meter accuracy in all directions. So that could be from floor to floor or up on the same floor of a building if it's a multi-story facility. Do you really need contact tracing, location tracing, or both? Right. So those, those are things to kind of understand what your expectation of doing uh, a solution like this would be. 
do have a real time requirement for beta. So that does affect how this gets deployed. So um, with a wireless based solution, it's typically uh, 24 hours behind, right? Uh, that, that data only gets processed every 24 hours. With a Bluetooth based solution, it's near real time. And budget, right? Ha have we actually allocated any dollars towards uh, doing a contact tracing uh, effort? Um, if we don't have any, if we don't have any dollars budgeted towards it, you know, what options do we have that are low to no cost, right? So I, I will just say there's a direct correlation to accuracy and budget. So um, a Wi-Fi based solution is typically the least expensive, um, and it, it doesn't cost very much, but the accuracy isn't as great. Uh, Bluetooth based solution because we're instrumenting the users with some type of a wearable device. There's going to be more more of a cost to that. So let's just kind of recap on your options, right? You can use a non-Wi-Fi based solution, right? It's completely app based. Um, you could use one of those freebie apps like uh, COVID Safe Paths. Um, you as an organization that will lack any type of data, you won't really get much out of those um, because there is no data that uh, is exposed to an organization, right? So um, it's better than nothing. But I'd say it's more geared, those apps are more geared towards the general population and not so much at organizations that are looking to take advantage of, of getting some contact tracing and visibility within their buildings. So then the, uh, the next solution that we have, and this is uh, an Aruba solution, would be to use Wi-Fi beaconing. So using your device that's connected to the wireless to triangulate its position and record where it's been within your facility. We can enable that for our on-prem uh, controller-based customers using Airwave or for our customers that are using uh, Central. So Central is our cloud-based platform. So I'll kind of break these two out. What happens for our on-prem Airwave customers is there's a patch that will be coming out shortly for Airwave that will uh, allow collection of this data to be sent into our uh, Aruba Cloud platform, Central. And um, from there, you will access a dashboard within our cloud-based product that you can report on contact trace, uh, tracing activity with. For our Aruba Central customers, customers who have already migrated to our cloud-based management platform, um, there is nothing that you need to do. Um, this data will be available to you, um, you know, shortly here in the month of July. The dashboard will be added, um, and you will be able to start um, contact tracing in your organization if you wish. For customers who are not using Airwave with their um, controller-based installs today, or for customers who are instant-based Aruba shops that don't have uh, Airwave installed or they don't use Central, um, you would need as a requirement to collect this data, Airwave, Airwave or Central. Um, one other note uh, about this, and again, this will be at the end of the deck as well, Aruba's intention is really not to charge for this, um, this service, right? So for our Airwave customers today, the patch is at no cost, and we're gonna be using a trial licensing to start to get you into Central just, um, just to give you access to the contact tracing dashboard. For Central customers, like I said, it's at no cost, it's just included in the base product. So if uh, 10 to 15 meters of accuracy isn't really uh, good enough, does not meet your organization's goals, um, we can also instrument your users with um, an Aruba token or Aruba, ta Aruba a Bluetooth enabled tag. Uh, this uses uh, the Bluetooth radio and the access point and this little tag chirps every minute or so on your network as uh, people walk around. And we can get a much more real time picture of where people have been, even do a replay of where they've walked or been within your facilities. This also enables us to show where occupancy is within your building, uh, not just kind of as an aggregate, but down to the individual room level. So if you need more pinpoint level of accuracy, um, a Bluetooth tag uh, is probably the way to go. The batteries last about four years in these tags. And um, again, you get that, that level of, of accuracy. The nice thing with um, users is the tags only work while you're within the building, right? So there's not really any privacy concerns because even if you would have this tag on your person outside of the office, um, there's nothing that it will do as far as locationing on, on you. It's only when it's within your Aruba network and tied in your Aruba account. And then last but not least, our third party solutions. I kind of just want to pause here for one second because um, the way I broke this slide up um, up top here, it kind of shows the three major technologies for triangulating user positioning, right? So GPS, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth. 
those are the three main modes of triangulating a user's position. The third party solutions all use that underlying technology, right? They're either going to use some type of um, Bluetooth, GPS, or, or Wi Fi triangulation. So, um, many of them require um, some type of um, analytics engine. So, we have the Aruba Analytics Engine, which actually um, will send data to these, um, these applications, stream like real time locationing data. But ALE is Wi Fi based, so the level of accuracy really does not increase. Still, you're at the 10 to 15 meters of accuracy. Um, sometimes they'll augment that accuracy with using like phone to phone or device to device, device to device Bluetooth. Many of them require a phone or an app. Um, there are some that you can also get a wearable tag with. But I just wanted to, to make it clear that the underlying technologies that they're using for locationing, um, they're all pretty much the same. So the accuracy is, is relatively the same. So we'll just kind of take you through a workflow here for what Wi-Fi based uh, locationing looks like. So if you're a ClearPass customer, you do some kind of radius authentication, you would onboard the user's device so that um, you have a name to go um, with the MAC address. The access points listen for these devices on your network and they uh, will send that data up to the Aruba cloud. And that's, that's where we um, use uh, AI machine learning to kind of crunch out the data. Um, we also use AI, AI and machine learning when users have multiple devices to understand which device is the one that they're carrying on their person. So we look at a couple of heuristics like the OUI of the Mac vendor, how often the device is moving compared relatively to the other devices that are registered to that user on your network. Um, and we have some other ways of crunching that data so that we're giving you an accurate, the best and most accurate um, location and data that we possibly can. Right? So your nurse or your person in charge is informed. They log into the contact tracing reporting tool and they put the username in and then get a report out of where they've been so that they can conduct their contact tracing efforts. Here is what that dashboard is going to look like. Um, so this is uh, still in pre-production, but it will be released here very shortly. Um, we made this as simple as possible. Uh, we did not really want to clutter this up with a whole bunch of um, extra knobs and dials. So it's merely you look up the username or the MAC address of their device. You get the total dwell time that they've had near other devices. That's what the total minutes are. You can set a threshold of what uh, an actionable um, contact looks like. So in this case, it's at least a 30 minute dwell time. Um, and then uh, a date range. And this is exportable into Excel. So you can, you can look at this um, however you want. If you want to stream this into a tool like Microsoft Power BI, you can kind of get uh, more of a graphical uh, representation of what this data looks like. You could certainly do that with Excel or, or some other tool as well, but this is just another way to kind of ingest that data. So if, if you use uh, Power BI, you can bring the data right into that tool as well. So that was Wi-Fi based locationing. Again, a 10 to 15 meter accuracy, um, but very low cost because we're basically giving you um, the contact tracing dashboard free of charge. And if you're already an Aruba customer, you already have the access points installed. So you can see there's, there's really not, uh, not really much cost involved there. Um, when we're looking at Meridian or, or Bluetooth based solution, they are going to be the more accurate solution because they have a one to three meter accuracy. Um, but the workflow is, you know, we issue tags to users. Um, we have a 300 or 500 series APs installed. Um, I do have an asterisk here for 200 series. We can augment the functionality on our 200 series with a USB Bluetooth dongle that goes into the access point. Um, the data gets streamed into our Meridian Cloud. That's our locationing services platform. Um, and then you can visualize that data. Um, so again, workflow is you know, user, user goes to the person in charge that does COVID reporting. Uh, they look up their tag and they see what other tags have been in close proximity. To, uh, to that user and they get the average dwell time. You can set a little bit more uh, data within Meridian. So you can look at things such as how close. So today it's, uh, I believe it's six feet or less is what we're saying is a, an actionable contact for 15 minutes. Uh, if, that, if that changes um, because um, tags are location-based, not proximity-based like wireless is, um, we have a much more, uh, uh, actionable window that we can kind of change uh, how many meters um, that contact would be. So we can say 
I want to see all contacts that were maybe 30 minutes of contact that were, you know, one meter. We, we can actually put that in and get that report versus two meters or three meters. So, so there's a little bit more that we can kind of tweak uh, within the reporting um, on our Bluetooth solution. So here's kind of what it looks like. You can add a picture to the tags. I wouldn't suggest that, but you certainly can. Um, you can see where tags are on a floor plan and you can zoom into this to get, uh, really understand where, where your space is being used. Um, this is what a report looks like. Again, you can see um, we have a user's asset tag. We can set the meters of distance, the time frame. Um, and we can actually, there's a replay button down here. You can actually see over time where the user was within your facility. So if you want to see where they've been walking in your facility for cleaning purposes, you can certainly, certainly do that. And then lastly, we have an overall asset exposure, right? We can take that tag and see uh, where it's been. We can take a group of tags and see where they've been within your facility over time. So again, this can aid your, your deep cleaning efforts uh, with your custodial staff. Uh, this is kind of what an Arab asset tag looks like. It's about a quarter, it's about the size of a quarter, about two to three quarters tall. So that gives you an idea of the size of, of the tag. It does fit into uh, certain wristbands. We have a, a wristband provider that, um, that, that makes a band that fits these tags. Uh, it's brandable, um, but you can certainly put it, you know, stick it on the back of an ID badge or just put it in your pocket. There's no requirement to have it in a band per se. Um, Incidentally, you can use these for other various purposes. So you can use these to track um, where users have gone in your building, but you can also use it to track where assets are in your building. So um, I know when I worked in education, just trying to find ladders was often uh, a challenge. So you could stick one of these tags on a ladder, for instance, and you could see um, right in Meridian where all your ladders are in the building, for instance. Um, but it does use uh, the BLE enabled Aruba APs. Um, the battery lasts three to four years and it's gonna give you that, that true location, right? It's not just approximate, which is kind of what Wi-Fi tracing gives you, it is, is very accurate. And so this is just kind of a, a recap of um, how these solutions lay out, right? So the Wi-Fi base, the cost is, is pretty much included in the solution that you already have. As long as you're an Airwave customer or central customer, you're really getting contact tracing um, built into the solution. You know, 15 meters of accuracy, again, that's all directions. So when you think of um, how an access point works, it radiates energy in, in all directions, unless it's a directional antenna AP, which is unlikely in your buildings. Um, so you have to kind of keep that in mind for your level of accuracy that you may, in your tracing report, see um, users from the first floor if the user was on the second floor, for instance. But again, that's why you conduct that interview and the user can say no, that, that I was not I was not with Bob or Sally, for instance. I don't know who they are. Pretty much, you can start to deploy it now, right? There's there's nothing for you to uh, to do ahead of time. Um, the dashboard will be available within Central shortly. Here, the patch will be out very shortly here for Airwave, so you can you can instantly pretty much get yourselves up to date for that. There's no real additional hardware except that the user has to have some type of device that they're keeping on their person that we're gonna use for locationing. So a phone typically, or some type of a wearable that is on your wireless and registered to the user. Um, and you need to have Airwave um, for central. Again, for Airwave customers, we're gonna be providing you access to the contact tracing dashboard. Um, our intentions will be that free of charge, right? And then again, the Meridian-based solution or Bluetooth, it does require some Meridian licensing. It does require the hardware tags. The accuracy is, is much more granular with one to three meters. Um, you do need to set the tags up. It's not extremely difficult, but you know there is a there is some of your time that's involved in getting those tags assigned to your end user population. You do need three or five hundred series APs. We can augment two hundred series, um, but really three or five hundred series APs is what we'd like to see. Um, and then the platform that we're aggregating aggregating the data on is Meridian. Again, that gives you that heat mapping ability to kind of see where people have been in your building for uh, deep cleaning efforts. So those were all of the Aruba-based uh, solutions, what is getting baked directly into our products. Um, now, uh, I'm just gonna quickly chat about third-party solutions that are out there. So um, we have a multitude of different third-party solutions that are out there and they, they do different things necessarily. They may augment your COVID response and some of them may actually be um, like spatial analytics, which that would basically be 
kind of what we're doing with Meridian or, or doing with the Wi-Fi based contact tracing. So, um, so you know, there's a rich ecosystem of partners. If you want to go app application based, um, then then this is where we'd probably point you uh, to go is to one of these partners. So again, the Wi-Fi analytics, they're going to use your mobile device. In some cases, they're going to use an app. In other cases, they're not. Um, I'll tell you that a lot of these solutions have been used for many years, but in retail for understanding where people congregate within a store, uh, like what displays they stand in front of, et cetera, et cetera. But these companies have extended their platforms to be used for contact tracing now as well. So they can tell you things again, like occupancy threshold, you know, are you meeting your, your reduced occupancy needs? Um, but again, just some things here, right? Like your AP density, like what if you have one AP in a, in a large building, your accuracy is not gonna be very good. You need at least three APs to triangulate, et cetera, et cetera. So um, you can take a look at, at, at what those have to offer. Uh, for Meridian-based solutions or Bluetooth-based, again, using the Meridian platform, you can use our tags or you can use an application on the phone. Um, the, the accuracy isn't as great when we use a phone-based Bluetooth because the radios are, um, are embedded in the device and they're not uh, purpose-built for doing um, tracking of, of, uh, of, of users, basically. So your Bluetooth and your phone is, is powered and, and the antennas are a little bit different uh, than they would be in our, in our tag. So the accuracy isn't quite as good, but still better than Wi-Fi. Uh, again, multitude of, of partners out there. But again, keep in mind from you know, all the data that we've seen, you're looking at a you know a 20 to 30 percent adoption rate. Um, many people are kind of concerned about um, the Big Brother effect, right? And then, um, not specifically a contact tracing partner, but um, just something that we are making customers aware of that we have seen um, some take advantage of um, our thermal thermal type cameras to take temperatures and mass in your hallways. So this is something that um, has come up a couple of times from, from different customers. So we've kind of just included, you know, an example of one. This is certainly not the only one that's out there, but they do have, um, they, they do make cameras that can take temperatures of people. You know, the VERT is kind of out on this a little bit because I don't think that these have really been adopted in mass um, up until this point. So, you know, things like pointing these directly at like um, a doorway where the sun comes in can sometimes affect their level of accuracy, things like that. But um, just something that's out there uh, that we want to just make mention of. You know, there are there are uh, there are some uh, complementary technologies out there to doing contact tracing. So with that, um, I'm going to ping Eric here and see if there were um, any Q and uh, questions that came up that uh, would be uh, a benefit to answer live. So, uh, Eric. So there was a question here. Um, is Aruba Central available for Alcatel Lucent rebranded Aruba controllers? And if so, at what cost? Um, I believe if you're using um, if you're using Airwave uh, to manage that uh, infrastructure, you um, you can uh, process that Wi-Fi uh, analytical data up to the cloud the same way that uh, that you would for the Aruba branded. Um, hardware. So, and as far as cost, uh, we're trying to deliver these solutions, the Wi-Fi based solutions at, at uh, basically no cost to you. So uh, you would be given access to the, the cloud dashboard for the, um, for the contract tech tracing uh, portion uh, at, at no charge is my understanding at this point. So, um, that's, that is the question in the chat room. Um, I, I wanted to, to mention, uh, we were talking about both Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth, uh, you know, enabled solutions here. Uh, the way that Bluetooth does its locationing is that it um, essentially, we're feeding data through the access points, um, the Bluetooth radio and the access points back up to the cloud. Uh, and so the, the wearable device is sending out a, a beaconing pulse. Uh, we need to be able to hear that, uh, hear that pulse uh, from three different, um, from three different, uh, different locations so that we can triangulate, uh, triangulate uh, location accurately. So 
depending on the, the, the density of your access points, we may need to augment, uh, augment the, the um, equipment uh, density so that we can get uh, a more accurate uh, you know, locationing uh, reading. So, I mean, the whole idea of this is to be able to tell you know, most accurately where you are, uh, and but doesn't require necessarily access points to do that. We have some other small battery powered um, Bluetooth enabled devices that uh, that you can place um, without having to go to the cost and and cabling and power requirements of of APs. So great. Well, thank you, Eric, for that. Um, and then just the last thing here, um, you know, for more information, check out uh, urbannetworks.com. Uh, if you scroll about halfway down the page, we have this, what will the new normal look like? Uh, you can also, uh, again, feel free to reach out to your Integra One account rep and they can hook you up with either Eric or myself. Um, and we can have a, a more in-depth conversation with you about uh, contact tracing um, specific to what your organization needs and, and what you currently have in your infrastructure. Um, so with that, um, I just wanted to thank everyone for their time today. Um, and if there are any further follow-up questions, again, feel free to, um, to direct those to your um, Integra One account rep. And we'd be more than happy to, uh, to answer those uh, for you or have a meeting. And with that, I'm gonna end the webinar for today. Thank you.